Hi and welcome or welcome back to Booktube with Amy. This is going to be my most recent wrap up. So I've actually got two weeks worth of reading to talk to you about in this wrap up because I took part in Picture This 2022 and while I was reading my picture books I was also reading other books but I wanted to do a dedicated vlog to Picture This 2022. If you haven't watched that I'll link it above or below or somewhere. So this is like two weeks worth of reading of four books to chat about. So the first book I read was for part of my I seriously need to finish this challenge and this was Off Poseidon by Anna Banks and this was the second book in the Serena trilogy and I really did enjoy this one. I think I enjoyed this one I don't know, right, so the first one I really enjoyed when it was a five star, but the awkward romance in the first one was like, oh, I wasn't here for it. But I really loved the characters and I really loved the world, so it was still a five star for me and I wanted to continue in the series. And this one didn't have as much awkward romance, so I feel like I actually preferred this one in terms of plot, but I feel like this one let me do a wee bit in terms of character development. There were some choices made in this book in terms of character development with our main character's mum and potential plot points around her mum as well and I didn't enjoy all of them and I thought that they were a choice but um, overall it was still a five star for me. I had, for being quite a short book it's only like 250 pages and for it being 250 pages there was quite a decent amount of twists and turns plus really big important plot points and world building. So I really did enjoy this one and this one was a five star for me as well. I will probably pick up the third one soon <laughs> because I have just really loved the world that Anna Banks has created and I feel like I say that every single time that I talk about these books but I don't know how else to describe it. She's just created such a really vibrant engaging world that you are so easily drawn into and there's really fleshed out politics and hierarchies and opinions, views, laws, magic system within this mermaid world which is just like everything I need in a mermaid book they are brilliant I can't recommend them highly enough and like we all know that I am a romance fan and these are sort of feel like fantasy romance and maybe I'm just coming around to the fact that I am actually a romance fan but I do like the romance in here the first book was very cringy very teen like awkward dating which I did enjoy but by the second one a lot of that has passed and um I enjoyed it, it was a fun time. So next up I read The Push by Ashley Audrin and I did this as a buddy read with Kendra. I saw she had tweeted a picture of a wee recent book haul and she had purchased this for herself as well and Simon just bought this for himself and I was like, maybe fancy that. So nominated myself to read it before he got the chance and it's a beautiful edition. It's got lovely purple sprayed edges. I really like the black and the purple. It's very striking and it's sort of pitched as a we need to talk about Kevin-esque style book which I really enjoyed. So that's what made me want to pick this up and I know that thriller is named a preferred genre or anything that I would even usually pick up but I did just really read and love Verity so I thought I would give it a go and this was not the one. Um, I really disliked this book and if it wasn't my first buddy read with Kendra I would have probably DNF this book. I just didn't go on with it at all. Basic premise is the mum has a terrible relationship with her mum who had a terrible relationship with her mum and she's trying to decipher if, you know, it's a genetic thing or if her daughter is a scumbag. Um, and it's all about her struggles of being a parent to this kid and, um, like, no really having that connection. And then she has a second kid and is really connected to that kid. So she's like, right, well, it's no the kids. Like, it's obviously just her. And it's about their relationship and some things that happen in their life. And it's almost like a is she, isn't she? Like, with the way being a psycho. And so I guess that that's what the, the mystery thriller aspect of it is. And I had quite a few 
issues with this book, to be honest. So firstly, I am never a fan when mental health is used as a plot device in a book. Like if you're going to try and do mental health rep then I think that you need to do it well. And for the first like a hundred or so pages of this book, to me it reads very much like a mum who's struggling with postpartum depression. And um, I just don't get on with that because there was no like, oh I went to my doctor and then this was fine. Like it like it was like oh I went to my doctor and this is not postnatal depression like I am the struggle with my mental health it's just because this wane's a wee shite and it's like is it though because like I've just spent 150 pages with you being depressed like telling me how depressed you're feeling because of the wane so if it seems like postnatal depression to me so I really didn't enjoy that and I don't feel like putting the caveat in of I went to the doctor and the doctor says I was tickety boo makes the fact that she's just spent 150 pages building up this depression storyline for her to go psych it wasn't it the wane's just an idea I really didn't enjoy that and I feel like the whole book is geared at you feeling really sorry for your main character because she's had a bit of a bad relationship with her mum and um, I just didn't, I really didn't, like I, she had a bad relationship with her mum and that was a shame but the choices that your main character makes in this book are just fucking terrible, like I get having kids isn't it, for everybody and that is fine and that is a valid choice like however if you choose that you're going to have a kid then you need to look after it like or there are other options available for you and your main character in here just did not look after her kid and that just scunners me to read like it just isn't a good book for me like reading pages upon pages about how you're just letting your wing cry and then how like you're annoyed at your husband because he's caught you just letting your wing cry like while you're doing other stuff and just letting your wing suffer like it's no fun to have to read about how you don't feed your kid like while your husband doesn't in the house and then like when he comes home you make it like you've been the perfect to be housewife like it's just not a fun time for me and I don't know how I'm supposed to feel sorry for you knowing that that's the choices that you've made and I actually feel like she really does just know like the kid and like uh, it's sort of left ambiguous like you don't know 100% whether the kid has a ball bag or whether it is just her it's sort of geared at the end towards that she is a ball bag and she has been potentially dangerous but at the same time I felt really sorry for the wee girl in here because she's been completely and utterly neglected by her mum like she feels like her dad is the only person that really loves her and looks after her I feel like she's went through quite a lot of trauma with her mum as well like and we're supposed to be geared to hate her which I just didn't I? like I actually felt really sorry for her she was a victim of abuse just like her mum was a victim of abuse and I felt sorry for her mum when her mum was a kid but then when she was an adult perpetuating that abuse like any sympathy that I had for you just went um, so I really didn't enjoy that and uh, I think that it tries to strike really similar themes to actually what Verity did but Verity did it in a really engaging way where we then had our main character reflecting on what the mum and Verity did and being like bang out your order, I feel really sick, can I believe she treated her wing like that like whereas I feel like this is just glorifying abuse because she didn't want a burn and I don't feel like that is ever alright um, also I think that there are some things in here that I found really unsettling that I have not seen anybody mention in their reviews on Goodreads or on Booktube and this book gets fucking hyped. So <laughs> Ashley Audrin in this book sexualises children and I'm not here for anybody to tell me that she does not because she flat out 100% does. In the opening chapters she talks about watching her wee girl who's like preteen, um well maybe early teen she's maybe about 14 15 and she talks about her breasts and how um she's like becoming a woman and you know like could pass for older and i was like mm, weird comment but okay we'll continue um and then later on in the book she talks about observing her daughter and her daughter's maybe only about eight or nine at this point and she's like oh like 
I looked at her lips and it just made me think about her kissing somebody and I'm like, hmm, like, I don't know, I obviously am the parent, but I wouldn't imagine that many parents would look at their eight-year-old's lips and imagine them kissing someone. Um, I really don't. I don't think that either of my parents would have had those thoughts about me, but okay. Um, and again, it was a buddy read, so I continued, but then the scene in here for me that just solidified that this was really creepy and pervy was the main character in this, the mum. She decides to be a chaperone on a, on a school trip, and um, her daughter, who is 13 at the time, is sitting beside her 13 year old group of girlfriends and um, she starts talking about her 13 year old daughter's friends tits and there is literally no point to that comment like it, it doesn't tie into the plot in any way it doesn't add anything to the story it wasn't like we were just getting like an overall description like oh she is like this height blonde hair da 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 crack and rack like uh, the whole point of that sentence is literally to talk about her 13 year old daughter's pals cracking tits why why is that needed why is it needed and i just feel like it's a bit of a double standard because it's a women author who's written this book. I feel like if it was a male author who had written this, people would be like, oh, to cancel them and be like, oh, disgusting comments, sexualizing children, blah, blah, blah. Shouldn't they be writing women like that? Oh, male gaze. But because it's a female author that wrote this, apparently we're just grand with the fact on three occasions in this book, she has sexualized an underage child. <laughs> Blows my mind. <laughs> Complete double standard. Terrible. Um, I will never pick up another Ashley Audrin book ever again after this. Um, it was disgusting and I don't know how anybody could enjoy this book and I do think that it's an entire double standard that nobody else has pointed out the fact that she sexualised a child in this book because everybody is so quick to call out Jay Kristoff who is accused of sexualising a child in Nevernight and for it being like quite male gazy. Now the main character in Nevernight is 16, age of consent in the UK is 16, she's literally talking about a 13 year old tits and it's fine. Like I am the here to stick up for Jay Kristoff, I DNF Nevernight, I DNF Delumine, Jay Kristoff is no my bag but I do feel like it's a double standard that nobody is mentioning the fact that she's just casually talking about 13 year old lassie's tits in this book like that is absolutely normal and it's fine. Like I'm really passionate about this and it makes me really really angry because like I think that people are so quick to assume that like if a man has written something like this that's really creepy and it's really pervy but like they will only call it out if it's a woman like and that's no true equality equality is that everybody is held to the same set of standards and I'm sorry but like sexualising a child is never alright and um, I'm not here for that on this channel so bye Ashley Audrin we'll never mention you again your book was pish it was a one star but I DNF'd it as I could just saying on to another what do you need? <laughs> um, I read Whisper Down the Lane by Clay McCow Chaplin with Gem from Bookish Gems and I was really excited for this. I got this for Christmas from Simon's dad. I read the remaking last year by Clay McLeod Chapman and it was a five star for me. It was absolutely phenomenal so I couldn't wait to pick up his other book. Um, and this is really really good. So we have again a dual timeline like the remaking. We have one in the past, one in the present and our two main characters are Richard and Sean and Richard is an art teacher at his stepson's school and sort of a all manner of creepy, ooky, spooky, <laughs> satanic panic stuff is happening and then Sean is a wee boy who is with his mum and they are on the run um, because Sean has came forward to say that he is being sexually abused in school by his teachers and it's about the fallout of that um, and I really did enjoy this book. I think that to me this was much more mystery thriller than it was horror. There wasn't enough creepiness in here for me and there wasn't enough of the you know real satanic panic anxiety um through this book I was looking for a wee bit more of that because like I am all about culty stuff like 
anything at all to do with cults, we all know I am there 100% writing in about it. I find it really engaging, I find it really entertaining, it doesn't even really need to be necessarily original, just that mindset really gets me going <laughs> um, and I felt like I needed more of that for this book and like I say it was definitely more mystery thriller um, than horror I didn't feel like there was a whole lot of like gruesomeness or creepiness coming for this book whereas the remaking was absolutely filled with that so I felt like that was lacking a bit for me however I really did enjoy it I really enjoyed Clay McLeod's Clay McLeod Chapman's writing yet again. I really liked the past, present, dual timeline story. Again, it was slightly mixed media, a bit like the remaking was. We have like chapters from each character's perspective and timeline, but then we also have some like investigation notes slipped in here as well, which I enjoyed and I thought it was just... I really like when somebody does something a wee bit different with a book. It just makes it a wee bit more engaging for me. So I did really enjoy that. Um, I felt like the plotline was slightly predictable. Um, I, I sort of guessed quite early on where we were heading and I was half right but that never hugely bothers me in a mystery or thriller because I sort of feel like to know what's going on. If it's a fantasy it ruins it for me and I hate it but if it's a thriller or a mystery then I'm like right okay I'm fine with it because I know what's happening. Um, but this is a four star for me in the end. I did enjoy it. It just wasn't as great to me as the remaking was but I will definitely check out more Clay McLeod Chapman's writing. I um, actually requested his <laughs> latest book on NetGalley after I finish reading this because it sounds so bloody good and I just really enjoy the writing. Um, I thought that he's written another bloody brilliant book so this is a four star for me, really enjoyed it, would recommend. Then I read Dead to the World by Charlene Harris. This is the next book in the Suki Stackhouse series and I read this for my Out of the Coffin read-along that I am hosting with Ange from Ange's Book Chatter. It was great. <laughs> Can anybody guess what I rated it? <laughs> Aye, five star. So I'm still going to talk about my thoughts or feelings on this one because as always we will have a live show on this and our live show is going to be on... First of May, 7 o'clock, Angie's channel. So I will talk about everything then, but I enjoyed it. It was a really quick read. I actually devoured like most of this book. I think I got like over halfway while I was on sprints. And then like it took me a week to finish the second half of the book just because I had no time to read. But I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I get why a lot of people say that this is their favourite in the series. It's personally not my favourite, but it is one of the ones that I find to be most enjoyable. Um, so, aye. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying everything that you are reading at the moment. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already and I will catch you in the next one. Bye!